And here we have an outstanding little boardwalk thing. It sort of defines this parcel. Got some lowland hardwoods. The water is wonderfully clear. <coughs> and now we climb up. We're in some kind of bowl. It might have been a kettle hole formation that just didn't <coughs> become a pond. It was too high above the water table. There's an interesting blowdown. We spotted a couple of ticks, but nothing really overbearing yet. Mosquitoes are beginning to hatch. All those things that are here to keep us out of Mother Nature's hair. Oh yeah. We're probably not too far from the parking spot. So this is just a nice, well thought routing of the base circuit. It does have that nice feature there, that nice geological feature. Well, just all of the, it's another great little trail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is very pretty. Really everything that we've gone along through down here, all this stuff that represents the effort of all the various planners, conservation commissioners, and volunteers, they've basically hit a never-ending bunch of home runs. <laughs> if you're gonna try to string a stunning and interesting trail through completely clobbered and half toxed out ridiculous Massachusetts and actually have it worth, be worth anything, this is sort of how you do it. <laughs> oh, it's hundreds of people, but yeah, but he was. He cajoled this whole he being, didn't he? Yeah. In the, the last 25 years or something? It took him about 20, yeah. And when did they start doing all this? The base circuit was originally envisioned at the turn of the 20th century, like around 1910 or something, maybe in the 1920s. The, there was a person from Harvard, I forget their name, he's kind of a hero to Al. Uh -huh. And he was one of the founders of the Appalachian Mountain Club. And he <coughs> designed the long trail along the uh, Green Mountains in Vermont. All the absolutely stunning sections that people have cherished for decades were designed by this guy. And so he wanted to create something similar for the beleaguered and often cheated people of Massachusetts. But because there wasn't much of an opportunity to extract any graft from it, there wasn't any big interest over in Beacon Hill. Mm -hmm. But it was relatively easy to talk a bunch of the participating towns 
into cobbling something together on their own and what they came up with is pretty good. Yeah. I think so. He must have had to you know, cajole an awful lot of private landowners into allowing access or giving up land or actually not not in this state. Look at that. Actually not so much. What he what if you look at the whole thing, there's a there's a method to the madness, oh, a kind of a pattern. Isn't well, you have, it's, it basically routes right. through town parcels. Now towns have places you can run a trail through that aren't necessarily conservation lands. Right. Like the boundary of the waterworks. Right. Nearly quite a few towns, the trail goes by the town water system because they were happy to let a trail go through it. They didn't care. Right. And um, a lot of public schools in Massachusetts have forested buffer zones. And so it often wasn't difficult to persuade people to allow an easement through those. Mm -hmm. And then you had whatever the individual towns have been gathering by way of open space properties. So then they enter into the mix. Town forests are an old New England thing. Newington, ha New Hampshire claims to have invented them, but I kind of doubt it. <coughs> this is a town forest. This is probably, I believe the purpose of these things, and no one's ever really researched it, was to provide <coughs> a common forestry materials resource from back in the day when wood was the essential element of our material culture. That was the original town forest was to provide firewood and fuel for the winter for the poor people who couldn't buy anything. That was just the stuff that would blow down. It was also to make standing timber so that you can saw planks for the school. Yeah, that too, but the, yeah, they had to use this, but the original it was a combination of the two, basically. Because you go through a lot of wood in the winter. Yeah, but, but a typical tract of forest, a five acre tract will keep a family through a winter just off of the wood that falls off the trees and falls down. About five acres is, will do it. A household needs about 10 cords of wood for a winter. You'll find that in five acres. Yeah, you might find that in five acres. Good luck. I have one acre. And, and here we are at the parking lot. Well, that's pretty good. 